My name is Michael Marker. I'm an associate professor here at the University of British Columbia and um, in the Department of Educational Studies and the director of Tuskel, First Nations Graduate Studies. Um, I started out um, with my own PhD dissertation work uh, when I got interested in this, doing stories from people, collecting stories from people who had experienced racism at, um, at a high school um, during a very turbulent time uh, in, in the 1970s when there was a lot of controversy around fishing rights victories. Mm -hmm. That led me to consider the ways that narratives from first people, the way that they narrate their lives, the way that they talk, um, is often very different and often unintelligible to people in mainstream educational environments. Um, there's a, a sense of uh, of story, there's a sense of reality, there's a sense of continuity um, going way back to where when, when Aboriginal elders talk about their life and their work, they're talking about uh, uh, the land and ancestors that go back sometimes six, seven, eight generations. Um, and so the genealogies, the, uh, the stories of animals, the stories of the, the, the place on the land is, uh, is absolutely vital in, for people to understand what Aboriginal people have experienced. And so the schools often don't, and people who are working in schools, don't know how to, um, how to listen to that. They don't understand what it means because they're used to a particular framework. They're used to a particular way of listening to each other and institutional language, uh, academic language that they come out of teacher training and administrative credentialing programs, um, and the the normative expectations about the goals and purposes of education are really different for Aboriginal people um, than they are for the main Native people. Have seen education. <coughs> often used against them as a weapon. So my earlier work was to look at how the education system, much like residential schooling, um, in the public schools during this controversial time around fishing rights victories that Coast Salish people had won, um, it made it really impossible for kids to talk about in school, to talk about their culture or to invite elders. As that work evolved, and I worked with the community, I came back from finishing my dissertation around these, uh, these stories on what I called the cultural barricades. I came back uh, to the community and started a teacher education program based on some of the research that I had done. Mm -hmm. um, that teacher education program was very successful and graduated um, over, over 25 teachers. Um, and not there any longer. Um, it was at the tribal college, and uh, the, the the problems in administration, the problems in economics for poor, poorly funded tribal colleges. Um, kind of a, a long story there. Um, so as I built the teacher education program uh, for the tribal college, and as I worked coming back here as the director of our graduate studies program. Um, one of the concerns that, that I have always had and that many people who are working in this field have had is the ways that the environment and ecological knowledge factors into the education system. Uh, and how can we use indigenous people's perspectives rather than just learning about Aboriginal people as a kind of social justice add-on to really understand the ways of life and the ways of understanding the land and the deeper structure um, and I hesitate to use this word, but it's really an accurate word, to, you, to understand the deep mythology, the deep mythos, the, the, the spiritual presence of the land. Uh, some anthropologists like uh, Keith Basso and particularly Julie Kirkshank recently um, have written about this and done really excellent work with, with Aboriginal elders. So I wanted to continue this work and to try and build in something for our teacher education program here at UBC. So I'm working on um, photography and filmmaking that I'm combining into kind of some multimedia stuff, which is what I did for the, for the CREATE seminar. Um, I've been taking black and white pho photographs. I'm very keen to use black and white photography um, because I think there's a, in, in my understanding around uh, the early days of cinema and the, um, the theorizing around film, 
um, there's a sense of dreamscape, uh, a, a dreamlike state um, deep in the, uh, uh, the, the subconscious, really, the, uh, where black and white photography can go, um, whereas color video, <laughs> as we're taking here, um, uh, just won't make it. So when you look at these black and white photographs of daily life on the reserve, um, and then look at conditions in nearby institutions uh, that are done not necessarily in black and white. I'm using different cameras and different angles uh, and different techniques to try and both portray the point of view of indigenous elders as they tell their stories about um, w what it means to be culturally responsive. Re really, my research is about helping teachers to understand what Coast Salish people, traditional knowledge specialists, teachers, parents, community people, and elders, what they mean by culturally responsive. How does one become culturally responsive if you're teaching in this place, the, the lower mainland and, and, uh, and, and northwest Washington state? Um, this, this giant region that, that we call Coast Salish territory, what does it mean to be in that territory and, and be a good teacher? So it's not just about uh, learning about Coast Salish people and learning about, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, maybe the regalia, what people wear at, uh, um, at ceremonies, or or what the art and carvings are, um, the kind of the physical, you know, the physical artifacts of a culture. It's it's actually getting deeper into that culture. It's actually trying to to raise questions by showing these black and white photographs, by by telling people uh, about what the elders say, by having them listening to elders and 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 Aboriginal parents' voices about about their feelings, their deep feelings about the land, um, I'm hoping to animate a sense in teachers that asks them to look deeply inside themselves and say, how can I link with this deep, satisfying sense of place? What does it mean to really feel like you belong in a place? Obviously, uh, you know, the, the question that's going to come up, obviously, Aboriginal people feel like they belong in this place. There's a, there's a sense of belonging that the the rootlessness of, uh, of North American education just can't quite address. Mm -hmm. Wendell Berry has put it really well, the uh, author and poet, uh, essayist. Wendell Berry says, the modern American education system is designed to produce yuppie, itinerant vandals. I love that. Now, contrast that with what my friend and colleague Oscar Quagley, a Nupia scholar, from the University of Alaska Fairbanks has said the goals and purposes of education are from an indigenous point of view. He looks at it the way Inuit and, and, and Inupiat people see life. And he says education for us has only one purpose, only one goal, and that is to produce a human being. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a profound statement and it's so different from the idea that uh, we're training people for careers such that they can be as, as uh, <laughs> itinerant uh, and uh, opportunistic as, as possible. And to me that's a completely different framework around the goals and purposes of education. So in lots of ways, because we're in Coast Salish territory, because I've lived here for many years, my, my family on my mother's side is Arapaho, and I grew up in the Colville, Spokane territory, the Okanagan go back five generations uh, there, and to that mixture of trying to understand uh, um, both native and non-native worlds as I grew up learning about. So I'm trying to bring some of that into this work that I'm doing here to say, for teachers who come out of these institutions here um, that are located in Coast Salish territory, to honor that. I mean, when we're here at UBC, we honor that, that uh, we raise our hands in thankfulness. We, we, we say we're, we're grateful to the Musqueam people because we know that UBC is on Musqueam land. So somehow there's a, there's a, it builds a sense of trust with the institution and with the indigenous people of that land to say, we respect that this is your place and that you have been here much longer than we have. And there's something that, that gets said in that. So if we can convey that to, to teachers, as they go out and, and try and work with kids, and not just the Aboriginal kids, the Coast Salish and other Aboriginal kids that are in this territory, but to understand uh, themselves as part of 
uh, an encounter with cultural otherness that should help transform their own identity. To meet with an indigenous people at that place is to have a potentially transformative moment for yourself, to really self-reflect, look at who am I in this place and what does it mean to be in this place uh, as an indigenous person coming from five, six, seven generations back that people can recall and, and, and generations and generations back before that. To, to really understand the animals, uh, the patterns of the, uh, um, of the ecosystem, to understand uh, the, those relationships and those interrelationships, and, and what they might mean for an education that helps a person to center themselves, to become, as Oscar Quagley says, a human being. So, this is the goal of the, of the research and in showing uh, some of the slides that I showed of uh, life in the community, people pulling canoes, people gathering for a giant potlatch, um, uh, the elders celebrating the youth, um, giving them awards and presenting them in their traditional uh, regalia, um, dressed up uh, to honor the ancestors and remember the language, to remember who they are and, and what families and and what traditions they come from, uh, to have people watch that and to see that and then contrast that with our mainstream institutional goals, that's the purpose of this work. And I'm hoping that we come up with some kind of a, a short film in the end of it, uh, this is my expectation, that uh, it'll be useful for teachers. I know teachers who are here, uh, instructors here at UBC in the Faculty of Education, when they're trying to um, get pre-service teachers through a program, they're very stressed for time. They've got a lot to cover. So if they got just some short, provocative film that they can show in the classroom to generate some discussion, and those of us who are indigenous faculty here at UBC can also participate. We can uh, have forums like uh, um, the First Nations. <coughs> excuse me. First Nations Day that we had uh, um, last year, where um, students gather in Scarf 100 and uh, in large groups and and hear presentations from indigenous scholars and, uh, and uh, people who are involved in indigenous education here at UBC. Um, this also is, is the kind of enrichment and the kind of uh, um, grounding that they need. But, but to bring this research in and to bring the voices of the community into the university um, in a way that, that really provokes some deeper reflection and discussion about indigeneity and Coast Salish reality for teacher, uh, teacher educators and, and for pre-service teachers. That's the goal of this work. Thank you very much, Michael. You're welcome.